Hello everybody, it's Dio from Firm But Fair Gaming bringing you another video. Join all the videos and content we produce. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button, click on that like button, and don't be afraid to share. Don't forget to click on the notification button, customize it however you want, but that way you're notified whenever we publish another video. Hello everyone. It is that time. It is the start of a new season. It is now season 26. So this is going to be a leveling guide and give you a few pointers on what you'll want to do as you advance in your progression and give you some tips and tricks in how to do that more efficiently. So to begin with, uh, let's start off here. Got to get rid of my stuff in the bottom left. So to start with, we should have done our weekly challenge rift and then not collected our weekly cash until now. So if you haven't done the weekly challenge rift, take off, go do that, then come back. And then you'll see down on the bottom left, we're going to have a message pending. We're gonna click on this and this is going to have our challenge reward. And we're going to take this and accept it to start our guy off with a bunch of gold as well as some materials. So as you can see here, Gonna open this up and we're gonna get a whole bunch of stuff. Gonna get some bounty mats and some veiled crystals, uh, arcane dust, and all that. Also, five million gold. And what we're going to be able to do that is just jumpstart our journey a little bit. So, again, if you haven't done your weekly journey, take off, go do that, then come back, and we'll continue from there. The next thing that we're going to want to do, as you can see, we have our this, I'm on a Witch Doctor here, so I got my Simple Knife. It does three damage. What you're going to want to do is, depending on your character, you want to go over here and basically steal your follower's weapon. So, like, for example, the Enchantress here has a 7.5 dagger. It is much better than my Simple One, which does three. There's also the Javelin from the Templar, which does 7.2. And then the Scoundrel uh, for the, like if you're a Demon Hunter, has the 7.7 .7 bow. So you want to come over here and we're going to steal their weapon. So you can't just do the clean swap because she can't use the simple dagger, um, or simple knife rather, because it's a ceremonial knife. So we're just going to take that and now we're off and rolling. So we have a much better weapon. And then what we're going to want to do is go get Kanai's Cube. So of course, Kanai's Cube is located in Act 3. You got to go into the Ruins of Szechuan. And we're looking for the Elder Sanctum. So we're just going to run through there and get to the Elder's Sanctum. And then we're going to go through there and find Kanai's Cube. Now, before, as I just entered in here, the first thing that I do, again, uh, it's a new season, so I want a pet. The pet, of course, runs around and collects gold for us, so we want one of those. So make sure to uh, open up, click on the pet, get him out there because, well, we want him to collect stuff for us and it saves us time from running around doing all that. So get the pet out there and then you're off and running. So now we're going to go get Kanai's Cube and then we're going to embark on the next part of the journey. So here we are, we are at the Elder Sanctum, just to give you an idea of how long the map was. This was a little bit longer than usual. But we had to get all the way over here to get to the Elder Sanctum. Now we're going to go in here and look for Kanai's Cube. It's going to be located in the far end in a hole in a wall. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. So here we are in the Elder Sanctum. Just to show you what the kind of map looked like for me. So anyways, this is what we're looking for. This big hole in the wall. So you come in here and here is Kanai's Cube. Kanai is going to appear. Just wait for him. He's going to make it available. Click on it. Now you have the cube. Sultan's going to appear. He's just going to talk. He's going to throw out a book. Grab that for some XP. Nothing huge. Then we go back to town. Our cube is going to be there. And then we're going to be able to continue with the next part of our journey. So here we are. Here's the cube. On to the next step. So now what we're going to do is we're going to utilize the bounty mats that we got from our weekly cash, um, or rather all the materials, and we're going to upgrade our blacksmith to rank 12. Um, and what that is going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to build a level 70 weapon, um, or craft one if you will. And so we're just going to do that, get it up to 12. And so the idea is we want to craft a level 70 yellow, 
and then we're going to use Kanai's Cube to upgrade it to a legendary. And then also we're going to then extract that, assuming we get a good property or a good weapon and put it onto into the cube. And then we would be able to add the weapon um, slot here, the weapon power, and that would give us a huge boost during a leveling journey. Um, while we're going through, it'll just give us that huge multiplier and help us level even faster. Obviously, we can't use the level 70 weapon, so it happens if we have an upgrade and get a bad one, then unfortunately, it's just bad luck, and then we're, we don't get that huge spike, but we're, you know, we're off and going back to our normal routine here when we go through leveling. So for the different classes, you're going to want to pick like your best main hand item. So for Witch Doctor, it's going to be a ceremonial knife uh for barbarian you know it's going to be a mighty weapon uh a bow for or crossbow for a demon hunter and so on and so forth so whatever your main weapon is going to be at end game that's the one that you want to upgrade to get and hope and to get a lucky rng and get a good weapon with a good power that you can extract and then put into your cube so here we go so we're going to craft a ceremonial knife so here we go it's a level 70 going to craft it and again we can only do this once so here we go here there's the knife just double check here um and now we're just going to go here and we're going to do a cane of hope which is page three or hope of cane and we're going to transmute it and it turned into uh this item um reynos flares so play of toads now can seek out enemies and explode twice it is not the best, but it's something. So we're just going to extract it. Uh, and then we're going to have the power here. So if you do get a bad one, so once you extract this, I'm going to just extract it just for this demo. So we're going to extract it. We're going to get the achievement um, or the seasonal journey. Then we can add the power. So now Plague of to Toads now seek out enemies and can explode twice. So it'll do twice the damage. Not the best, so we can only do that once um, until we get to past level 50 and then Death's Breath starts dropping because that's our limitation. So if it was a bad one, like that one was not great, we could have decided not to extract it and then hope through our leveling journey that we might find another weapon that you know would be good for a short period of time while we're leveling and then we don't level it and then we could put it into the cube as well. So that is one thing to continue consider but hope for a good rng hope that you get a good one so you can extract it put it there and that'll give you a huge power spike in your leveling journey the next thing that we want to do is we're going to have blood shards from out of the cache so i actually end up with 500 we don't end up with that many i ran into a blood goblin while trying to get the cube so that was just kind of good luck and what we're going to do is you're going to gamble so you can pick what item you want so if we want for armor some classes are going to it'll be better to try to roll on gloves just due to um you may get a leg lucky legendary because that's what we're hoping to get is more legendaries that will help give you a huge power spike some you might want to roll for an offhand so like uh i might want to roll for mojo here on the witch doctor and others may want to go with bracers you can also hope to try to get a nems which would spawn a nemesis braces which spawns you know at least out of pylons or you can just try to go for the helm and try to get leoric's crown because of course that doubles the gem power that is in it and then when you get a red gem you can put that in to double your the experience that you're going to gain from that so just for that for i'm going to go for that so <laughs> there we go a first roll i got a legendary helm but it is not one that i can use nor is it leoric's so i'm just going to keep rolling here so we're just going to Gamble, spend all our blood shards, and see what we get here. I actually ended up with two of the same ones, um, but no Leorks. But that's just an example of what you can do. Gamble, if I wanted to, or if you want to even, you could space it out and try to fill up your whole slot if you want. Um, but yeah, I would recommend either going for Leorks or going for an item that you know is going to be a huge power spike that'll help you level so you could have two legendary unique properties working for you as you start your leveling journey and just give you that huge power spike next on our list is we are going to want to craft a level 70 weapon again um, so we're going to pick 
a two-handed weapon because they are going to do the most damage. So pick a two-handed weapon that you can use. So I am going to, again, I'm on a witch doctor, so I'm looking for a staff, which is right here. So we have a few materials left from our bounty that we completed, or not a bounty, our weekly cash. So we're going to create the level 70 weapon again. And what we're looking for here is we want to be able to get reduced item level requirement. So here I have a level 70 staff. So I'm just going to put it into, now of course I need to upgrade my mystic. So there we go. So now we it needs to be ranked two, so I level it up. We have more than enough gold and the mystic is one that you can upgrade as it doesn't require a death breath. So you could just make it max level. We have the gold for it. So as you can see here, down in the bottom, we have ignored durability loss and chance for knockback. So as you can see here, if you click on the possible properties replace, it has uh, grants XP, chance to fear, stun, blind for you. So the fact that it's got the chance to knock back, it knocks those out. But then at the bottom, this is the one that we're actually after. Reduce level requirement, reduce by two to 30. So now if I go to the ignore durability loss, if I try to reroll it, as you can see, it removes all those other ones. So this is basically what we want to see. So if it has any of these chance to do something, it means that the other side, so this ignore durability loss, is only a one in three chance of getting the level requirement reduced by two to 30. And of course we want to get this to be 30. That would be miraculous because then when we hit level 40, we can use a level um, 70 weapon and it'll just blow everything up and we'll be able to level up really, really fast once we get to that point. So I'm just going to go here and we have limited mats and we gotta be careful that um, it's gonna get quite expensive with gold here. So potentially if you have bad iron, RNG and you don't get it on your first few here while you go through with the amount of materials you have. As you get more materials, you can come back and try again. At some point, it might be way too expensive for gold. So then you may want to create another level 70 weapon and try to get the same um, chance where you it will have a knockback or life per, uh, on it. And then you can then roll and try to get it, if you know what I mean. Hopefully that made sense. I have a feeling I just talked in a circle. But anyway, so we're going to replace this. And there we go. So there's one example. So we got reduced by 18. So now I could use that at level 52. Obviously we want something a little bit better than that. So I'm just going to reroll a couple more times just to see. Obviously keep that if you don't get it again. So it's not going to be guaranteed all the time. As you can see, there's a few. I only got a couple more. There we go, reduced by 21. So now I can use that at level 49. So we wanna to try to get to 30, obviously. Um, it's not guaranteed, so reduced by seven. Don't want that. Got a couple more chances here. Now it's up to 124,000 per shot. Now we're up to 140. There we go, reduced by 24. So now I can use that at 46. I'm gonna stop there because that is phenomenal. Like that's pretty close. Um, and I don't wanna go through much more of my resources. So that's good enough. So then I'm just going to go over here and throw this in the stash. Um, as you can see, I had to spend some blood shards earlier as well um, from I ran into the, to the blood goblin. So I got a, another gazing demise out of that. I was just gambling and thought I could see what kind of legendaries I might get. And I got one. So actually a pretty good RNG from Kadala. She gave me two of these, one of that. Um, but then of course, when I upgraded my legendary, it wasn't quite as lucky. But anyways, that was a little bit of tangent. So that's what you wanna do. You wanna create that level 70 weapon. Now, when we hit 46, we're gonna come pick that up and we're going to be able to just explode and progress insanely quickly. Now, we are almost ready to go and resume leveling. Um, so what we're going to do is in each of the acts, there are these vendors, the merchants. So we are looking for the fence because the fence sells rings and amulets. And what we are looking for is a ring that has plus damage. Each act has one. So that guy did not have a ring that had plus damage. Uh, so we need to go find the fence in act two. So again, each act has one and we are just looking for rings that have plus damage. At this level, it should be about two to four. So that's going to regen. So here we go. Two to four and reduce skill cooldown. So then I'm going to add that. So 
my damage was 19. Now it is 25. They buy two of them, and now it is 30, almost 31. So this is what we can do right off the start. At level 11, I believe it is, we can come back and buy a necklace. So I'm just going to show you that as well. So here we are uh, at a, another fence, and as you can see here, we have a knack that has plus two to four. So it's going to buy that, takes our damage from 32 to 38. So basically you wanna find the fence, buy the neck, and complete the set with the ring. Sometimes they may not have, like the fences may not have the plus damage rings or necks. So just create a new game and find them again until you get it as it is a huge power spike and you will want to have those as you go along. And as you keep going through and leveling up, and of course you'll out level these items as they are pretty low level, like level six and level seven. Uh, in, you, in your downtime, when you're in town, just pop by the fence, see if they have new ones that have the higher damage. As you get higher, it'll be like, you know, four to eight kind of thing. So just make sure you visit them occasionally and see if they have those ups as you go. Uh, when you get higher levels, some of the next, as soon as they get into like increased crit, like have crit chance and all that sort of stuff they will be more powerful than these ones that have the plus damage. But in the lower levels, just keep popping by in your downtime when you're clearing your bags and that sort of thing, just to check out to see if they have an upgraded version of the rings and necks for you. So one thing that we can do if we did not get lucky with Kadala, or if you decide to spend your material, your blood shards for a different item, what you can do is you can actually go into the story mode. So if we go into the campaign mode, uh, you can go into the campaign and there you would be able to progress through and kill Leoric because the, if you kill Leoric in the campaign, you automatically get the Leoric's crown. So that is one thing that you can do if you want to go that route. You don't have to. If you're playing in a group, if you have somebody that has high movement speed, you could send them off to the campaign and before they get to that part of the Leoric, Leoric quest or fight, everybody could join their game go in there, kill the orc, everybody would get the helm, and then you can go back to either doing rifts or the bounties, depending on what you want to do. Or if you're playing solo, it's recommended that you do this because you'll the, for the bonus XP, or if you don't want to, you don't have to. But the bonus XP you'll get from having the gem in there makes it definitely worthwhile. So you may want to consider doing that. The next thing we want to do is because we want to try to get to level 21 before we jump into rifts just because it's more efficient at that at that uh, level because you'll have more talents unlocked or skills unlocked and you'll be more powerful and before we get to that and jumping into rifts and just doing it on repeat we should complete act one so if by completing act one we're going to get the bounty the large heraldic chest here and the reason we're doing Act 1 is, one, the mobs are a little bit more docile, easier to kite, and not as dangerous as in the other acts. As well as the cash here, they have both the Sage's Journey as well as the Born set. And both of those, when you equip them, uh, if you have the three-piece items equipped, they give plus experience. So that is what we're after. Hopefully, fingers crossed, you get it. Um, if you don't, you can either create a new game and run it again to try to get it, or if you're already over level 21, you can just jump straight into rifts and do that as you progress. So that's what we want to do is we want to hope to do the act one. Also, it is also part of the seasonal journey. So we're going to kill two birds with one stone here. We're going to knock something off in the seasonal journey, as well as hopefully get the canes or the born set for the additional XP. The last tip that I want to uh, provide here is as you're going through in your downtime before you get that magical level 70 weapon that we have downgraded to be able to equip at lower levels, what you want to do in your downtime when you're clearing bags, just go to the, the forge here and find your two-hander that you're going to use. And like I'm level 11 right now, my weapon is just level 3. You want to make the highest usable two-hander that you can. So like if I go highest usable, there's a two-handed axe. Like I would be able to use this. And so you want to craft those as you come along just because there's a high chance that they will be better. See here, I just moved up. So I got the 5% increase. So I just equipped that. And now I do a 40 damage instead of I think it was 38. Yeah. 
So that's what you want to do in your downtime. Just go find the highest usable, find the two hander that you can build it. And then you're going to, it'll keep upping your damage as you go through. Cause you want to keep that as high as possible. Cause that is where most of your damage comes from. Also, I know that two handers have a little bit of a slower attack speed, but if you're a resource starved class, that'll help you keep your resources a little bit higher because you're dealing more damage at a slower speed. Um, but overall, it's still better for you, better progression that way. So again, in your downtime in, ta in town, sort to the highest, show you the highest usable, find the two hander, make that, enjoy the increase until you get to where you can use your big dog level 70 item that you have reduced the level on. So just a tip that while you're leveling, what you should do or how you should base your, the difficulty that you're leveling on, you should basically be able to two shot everything that you're fighting because that'll help you for speed. Um, and basically what you want to do, you don't want to be sitting here fighting the same thing forever and ever. So as you can see here, I'm pretty much two shotting everything. Um, I'm just trying to get to level 11 again so that I can buy the neck. Um, but yeah, you just want to be able to basically two shot everything. If you start like having the five, six tap, that's you know, going to be quite long and it's really going to slow you down. Plus when you run into elites, it's going to be even more challenging to work through them. So this is probably about all I want for right now. Again, this is normal because I didn't get a good secondary. Um, or a unique property from my upgrade to put in my cube. I could even probably go up to, let's see how quickly this guy does. I could probably go up to master or hard and give that a try and then work my way backwards if I need to. So here we go, we just hit 10. We need one more level and then we'll be able to go by the neck. But that's kind of what you want to gauge your difficulty on is how quickly you're killing things so again if you're one or two tapping you might want to go up a level that's ideally where you want to go but if you go up a level you still might one or two tap once you get into needing to five and six you might want to drop at one just for the speed that you want to go through so here's an example of masca farming um i have got up to 190 um and now i'm at 200 so as you can see i am almost 210 i'm almost level eight here I, oh and it just ran out but as you can see i was almost level eight we got the 3.2 i believe it said there for the bonus xp and we got a full level and almost up to level nine off that so that is one example of massacre farming and what you want to try to do you want to get as big as a kill streak as possible due to the multiplication that happens to the XP that you get for killing those mobs. So my closing remarks. So what we want to do, just to recap, we want to steal our followers weapon. We want to go get Kanai's cube. We want to craft the level 70 weapon, upgrade it, extract the property. Um, then we want to go buy our rings and necks, rings ASAP, neck whenever we get to level 11. We want to gamble on Kadala. Uh, get as either legendaries for hopefully for Leoric's Helm and then if you don't get it you can decide to go get it or you can just progress and then once we hit level 21 we want to jump into Nephilim Rifts and we want to do that until we get to so this is, of course is a Nephilim Rift we want to do that until we get to our magical level where our level 70 down graded weapon is so by that I mean the one that we have reduced the level requirement and then you can either decide to keep going in the Nuffle and Rift or doing bounties if you want. That is completely up to you. It is kind of 50-50 at that point. It You could then decide to, you know, do the axe if you want to because we need to do that for the seasonal journey. And then you're just going to keep doing that until you get to 70. So either the bounties or the Rift and just rinse and repeat until you hit level 70. And then you're good to go and on to completing the seasonal journey. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. I'd be happy to answer any of those. If you have any other different leveling strategies that you use, I'd be happy to hear about them as well. As always, we appreciate it. Like, share, and subscribe. So until next time, I hope you are excited and enjoying this season 26.